Ambassador Al Payati of Iraq, uh, Madam uh, Michelle Bachelet of UN Women, Excellencies, uh, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for this hospitality. I think it's my pleasure to join today for this luncheon hosted by the, His Excellency Ambassador Hamid Al Bayati of Iraq. The Secretary General and the United Nations inspired me to do so many things during my uh, tenure and the United Nations. It really was precious for us to hear. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, thank you very much for coming. And we have to get together. Oh, we do, we do, we do. And we want to pick your bride. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's lovely to have your mother. It was really lovely to have that personal touch. Thank you. 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 The United Nations adopted International Year for Youth back in 2010. We established this organization to enable youth like yourself to have internship in the UN. I'm teaching Arabic, somebody else was teaching Spanish, even Chinese because we want to enable you to get uh, uh, more knowledge about the UN objective and to help you to get jobs. The ultimate objective is to have better leaders for a better future. In 2012, I went with a team of World Happiness Project, including two grandsons of Nelson Mandela of South Africa, to the President of the General Assembly, went to the Secretary General, and we proposed to adopt a certain day in the year, which is considered as International Day of Happiness. It was adopted by consensus, and uh, all the countries, all member states agreed that 20th of March will be the International Day of Happiness. I thank uh, Ambassador Hamid al-Bayati of Iraq for organizing this very important event. Uh, gender equality and empowerment of women and girls has been priority uh, from my first day as a Secretary General. We have more female special representatives than ever before on the ground. A lot of people may work hard but the Secretary General not only works hard, but he works smart. And I think one of the best examples that he brought the most powerful ladies in the world to work in the United Nations, to give a good example of gender equality and empowerment of women. And today, for example, I'm going to name um, those ladies the most powerful ladies in the United Nations. Of course, you know Michelle Bachelet and the Secretary General Executive Director of UN Women and former President of Chile. Peace. <laughs> Helen Clark and the Secretary General, the Administrator of the UN Development Program, UNDP, the former Prime Minister of New Zealand. Susanna Malkora and the Secretary General and Chef de Cabinet of the Secretary General Office. <laughs> Angela Kane and the Secretary General High Representative for Disarmament Affairs. <laughs> Patricia O'Brien and the Secretary General for Legal Affairs and the UN Legal Council. Zaruki and the Secretary General and Representative of Secretary General for Children and Armed Conflict. <laughs> Amir 
Daniel Ahak, and the Secretary General for feed support. And last but not least, Lakshmi Puri, Assistant Secretary General and Deputy Executive of UN Women. I really want to thank the Permanent Representative of Iraq for hosting this lunch today, bringing us all together so that we can have time to talk informally and reflect on the importance of this historic session, of this 57th session of the Commission on Status of Women. But I really want to thank you, Ambassador, because you have shared with us a part of your history, of your personal history, and exceptional women like your mother, The person who inspired me, encouraged me, and stood beside me all my time and struggle against the regime inside and outside Iraq, when I had to flee, when they came to re-arrest me, to execute me, was my mother. She was helping me in hiding <coughs> secret papers in Iraq, and that's an execution for her and me, and maybe for the rest of the family. What Saddam did to my country, my nation, and to the whole region. I felt that I should say something, I shouldn't keep silent. Uh, the majority of the Iraqi people kept silent because they don't want to get in trouble. Many of them, they decided to go with the regime in order to get benefit. But for me, I felt that there was a duty to stand against a dictatorship. In a prison, I felt that I could be executed. I was almost, almost being executed because one of the prisoners, if he said a word about me, I could be executed. You know, they try to make me confess that I'm a part of a secret organization. I never did. I was a part of a secret organization. I think that struggle in Iraq is what drives him to help the youth around him. The youth that are serious in changing the world and want to make a difference, he will help them 100%. I'm a film and television major. And I told him I wanted to make humanitarian documentaries. He said that was a brilliant idea and I should go for it. And I've been able to see meetings at the General Assembly, the Security Council. I've met so many amazing people, like the Secretary General and his team. I was there when Palestine became a non-member observer state. I was sat at the top um, and I saw all the votes come in. And I just thought to myself, this is such a surreal moment to me. I I've witnessed history in the making. I have been able to have that experience. That's all because of the ambassador.